shot clock. Gaze is the man they should go for. Makes the three. Gaze 28. Tigers lead by seven. Yeah, he's, he's a name in the face of Australian basketball and he's done more for the sport in this country than anyone else. Gaze for three. Absolute perfection from Andrew Gaze. Nothing but net. Great guy to be around. Very enthusiastic about basketball. And that's it. Nothing else. <laughs> he he eats, sleeps, and whatever else you want to call it, basketball. Uh, Gaze pitches it, blocks it, then pitches it. Great play, Gaze. Can he finish it off? The man's a freak. I don't think there'll be uh, another Andrew Gaze, and a lot of people probably say these things, um, but I would never say that while he's around, because he's got a fairly big as it is. <laughs> Gaze. No. Oh. Oh, oh. That's unbelievable. He's our hero of Australian basketball, and if you play, if he was a, a top-line football, you know, you'd see his face everywhere. Um, he's been a fantastic ambassador, and he's been to, this is his fifth Olympic game, so, and he's just a pretty, pretty good guy to go with it. That's brought Magic back on the line for the Tigers. That was a whole three of two days. He was a meter outside the three-point line when he shot that button. I think history is going to remember him as people remember Donald Bradman, and I appreciate the, uh, y y you know, the, the significance of that opinion. Gaze throws up the shot. He is a three. Every single game, all game long, get 33 to 35, 31 points. You know, not in any other sport, certainly not basketball around the world, with the exception of Oscar Schmidt, maybe in Brazil, are you going to see that? Copeland, Gaze is free for the three. Plenty of time. Andrew Gaze is up to 31 points. I think he has a certain amount of respect throughout the building, no matter who you speak to. It's um, the Gaze name, you know, with his father and Andrew as well, but uh, he's achieved a lot out of that body. Gordon, thought about the three. Three seconds to go. go. Up it goes from Gaze, makes it. The champion does it again. <laughs>of Albert Park um, are probably one of the more memorable years I have because it was such an unusual environment that I was living in. Um, always had the, the basketball there and, and because we lived in the house that was basically attached to the stadium, you know, from the time I was born till I was about 13, had a nine court basketball stage in my backyard. So, and because my dad was the manager, could always get the key to the front door and Whenever it was shut down or late at night, you could go in there and have the whole gym to yourself. I always thought he had the best playground of any kid in the world uh, because in an environment where you can have a go at any sport uh, in a park setting, so whether it's tennis, table tennis, badminton, golf, cricket, football, yachting, you, you name it, it was in his backyard. So I think most kids would love to have something like that. Whenever the PE teacher or, or the primary school teacher is, what are you interested in, what sports do you play, and I put my hand up and play basketball, a lot of my mates thought, gee, that's a bit of a sissy's game, you know, it's a, a bit wimpy and didn't really, thought it was a cross between netball and didn't understand the rules, this, that or the other. So it was kind of a wimpy sort of, you know, I play basketball, sort of reluctantly confessing that I'm involved in that because it wasn't that popular. My dad taught me most things I know, but along the way I had a lot of different coaches. Um, my first coach in a team environment was, was Ron Anderson was his name. And um, I remember him because he was there and whenever you'd be in a timeout and if you ever do something wrong, he'd always pull your hair like this. And I used to say, gee, I hope I don't, he doesn't pull my hair <laughs> or, or pull my ear or something like that. Um, and, uh, and because I started so young, you know, I was six or seven when I started playing in the under 12s, um, you know, that, that, that those sorts of people have a, a pretty strong influence on you because, you know, through those formative years, they're there. The, the time that we recognised talent was at a senior level was when he was about 15 and he came off the bench to help us win a state championship against the likes of... Um, Cal Bruton and James Crawford and that era. So um, we were playing against a very good team 
and uh, Brian Gorgian fouled out. Uh, Bruce Palmer had the playmaking responsibilities and he flunked. <laughs> and uh, Andrew came off the bench and showed all the maturity of a senior player and got us through a tight game. And uh, it was really at that point we say there, there's a special talent here. But let me tell you, a lot of the guys nowadays, we, we have our rookies coming to our team and they complain about us, you know, having to make them carry the bags or, or do this sort of stuff. The abuse I t talk from guys like Bruce Palmer and Alan Westover, I copped an absolute pounding. It was not like, you know, I looked stupid going to the coach because the coaches, my dad was coaching us then, so I couldn't go crying to the coach or anything like that, so I just had to cop it. So I copped an absolute pounding, um, and at the time it was hard work, and I guess it was a, sp a phase that it was either going to make you or break you, and, and fortunately for me, it really did help me, and I was able to sort of to, to work within those conditions and, and get the most out of it. Obviously not just a shooter, and he's a stealer as well. <laughs> Two steals in a row to Andrew Gaze. 85, 86 and 87 and a little bit of 88 were very, very lean years. I think the most games we ever won throughout that period in the whole season might have been three or four. So we copped a lot of poundings in it throughout that period of time. He's holed up in hospital, his blood being thinned in an effort to dissolve a potentially deadly blood clot. The injury is a shocking blow for Gays and his beloved Tigers. The team had just clawed into the NBL finals contention with two successive one-point wins. Now the man known simply as the Drew Factor won't be available for the Tigers remaining home and away games, nor the final series. The diagnosis is a stress thrombosis. Initial treatment failed to dissolve the clot. Therapy could now drag on for six months. Yeah, it was a a very, very scary time, but fortunately I was able to recover from it, but it was a, a difficult time. And I think it, for me, though, looking back on it, um, it was an experience that I think that helped me. You know, you certainly, I don't recommend that everyone goes about getting a, a blood clot or having something serious happen to them to have that sort of experience. But, but in hindsight, I look back on it and I see, um, you know, the, the difficulty that I went through there. I have something very tangible and objective to measure um, su difficult situations against. And uh, no matter how down you get when you're playing a game and you're losing or you're going through a bit of a slump and you're having some trouble, and every any time you feel down, you think, well, how bad can it get? I have something that I can reflect back on and say, hey, things are all right. Seton Hall at forward, a 6'7 junior from Melbourne, Australia, number 10, Andrew Gaze. At the time, Seton Hall ranked 7th or 8th in our conference. There's nine teams in our conference at that time. We were ranked 7th or 8th, though. We were ranked to do nothing. And um, I remember the first day of training and saying, this must be the greatest league in the history of basketball if we're ranked seventh or eighth in our conference you know look at all these great players so and sure enough you know we went about it and you know we were actually very very good Gaze hoists a three from down under Snyder without a field goal Gaze down under again at the time, I remember they were telling us that outside of the Olympic Games and the Super Bowl, the NCAA Final Four is the most watched television sports show in the whole of the United States. It'll be Gaze again. Well, they don't have Larry Bird in Australia, but Gaze will do down there, won't he? They really weren't aware of basketball in general, of basketball outside of the United States. So to have a foreigner, and not only that, an Australian, who most of them didn't really know too much about Australia, they all thought that we had kangaroos bouncing down the, you know, the middle of the street. They're saying, how did this guy wind up in South Orange, New Jersey? How did he wind up there? And he's playing and contributing and being a, uh, an important part of the whole, whole team. I think that they sort of couldn't come to terms with that, so it created a bit of a tension over there because it was, it was so unusual. Number 38, Kamala 
Gaze's father is the John Wood of Australia. He is the gentleman there with the gray hair on the right. His name is Lindsay Gaze. He coaches a team down in Australia. Now, there are thousands of players in the United States, if not millions of players in the United States, who grow up with the dream of playing in the NCAA final. And Andrew, by a remarkable set of coincidences, was able to play on an NCAA final team. And uh, one that's still remembered as maybe one of the best games of a final in the history of college basketball. You can't begin the odds of selecting a school to go to for one, one year, getting in the team, being able to make a contribution, and then getting to the championship game, the odds of that happening are so ridiculously phenomenal. So I just won another case, just I guess in the right place at the right time and a lot of luck. Now with the shot clock running down, Deegan Mills makes it tough to throw the line drive pass. Starts win touch. Long pass. Walker and Green battle. Walker fires up. It's over. Michigan has won a national championship. And for the third time in the last eight games, it has been decided by one point. The Wolverines win an NCAA title over Seton Hall. A tough opponent all the way. Andrew's a, uh, a different, a unique individual. He, uh, he has a certain persona he shows on the court and in the public eye, but he's a little bit different off the court and uh, you know, we get to see a little bit different side of Andrew now and then and uh, the cameras can pan around far enough, you might see a few holes in the wall, he gets very uh, very agitated, very uptight about the game, he's very passionate about, but uh, yeah, a little bit fiery as well, he's not the, the quiet, doesn't say anything wrong guy all the time, you know, he gets a bit fiery. Certainly with my dad being there and um, sharing those experiences from a club level and his experiences internationally and taking his advice and, and helping along the way, there's really nothing in my life that he hasn't had a very, very profound influence on. And my mum too. And my sister. When I went to Europe the first time to Italy, it was a major culture shock. And you're there and you're trying to fit in and, and, and seeing the way they play, to seeing the emotions of the players, how behaviourally they're different because of the culture they're from. Um, all those things, it was just a, a, an overwhelming experience to say, oh, how, do, how do you fit in with this? And then when you finally get to a game, and you see you're dealing with the coach, you're dealing with the other players, and then you see the way the fans go and their passion and commitment for the game. And it's like, what am I in here? You know, there's a bad call and all of a sudden the fans are going nuts and there's feel like there's almost sounds like there's gonna be a riot in the in the gym. And then, you know, you keep playing and there's another bad call. So then they take it on another level and they start throwing cups and paper on the court and they're getting so into it. And then something else will happen and they they start throwing coins onto the court. Bang, throwing it out there and you're thinking, what am I in here? What, what, what's going on? What's this all about? So it took a while and I think at first it really took me off, took me off guard saying, this is crazy. This is not what it's supposed to be. But the more you played there and the more you, you got used to that environment, it's actually, of all the places I've played, um, you know, probably one of the, the most fun places to play because the passion and commitment of the fans and when you know by and large that their intent is good they're not out there to actually hurt you it's just their their way of showing their frustrations and commitment for it and you're playing a game which clearly means so much to so many people it's it's actually a a very enjoyable and fun experience but it does take a bit of getting used to the hammer come on how's things right. been going first time olympian good mate, it's good, but I went to get my hair cut. <laughs> now, you got to get your hair cut. I couldn't get any tips. What am I meant to do? Hey, eh? hey, eh? how can I do anything without my tips? I'm back to the normal colour. Hey, eh? mate. Oh well, we have an hour in there. We can't tell them what, how we want to get our hair cut. I mean, that was a priority for me to get my hair cut. 
And that would, that would have been the ultimate goal to get Drewy with tips. Not silver ones, no, blonde ones. And that ear pierced, but he wouldn't get it. I've been rooming with Shane pretty much um, a lot of my international career with, with the Australian team. We, we roomed together in Barcelona, here's all the first Olympics. And, um, you know, we we uh, been together ever since. Not to say. Look at that. Oh, not What have you got to say, Mark? I said the red skinned man with the red dots where I hit him with the tennis ball. It's pretty good effort. I'm rather happy with it. How are you feeling now, Amber? Well, I'm taking a bit of abuse today, mate. And uh, I'm starting to feel a tad weary. There he is, mate. The man is going to lead, lead the boomers to the promised land. How do you feel, Lee? I feel good about right now. <laughs> Bowl to 177 in uh, the game room. Big Smitty's butt, 3-0 in pool. I'm on a roll. Smack up. There you go. It's the last game, fellas. Come on, once you go hard. You been doing weights lately? It's like you've been working out over here. Mate, see, that's not cool ragging on me, you know? I'm we're, not ragging, we're, mate. We're I'll facing the biggest challenge of our lives, and you're here ragging on me. No, you're looking buff, mate. You mate, are looking buff. I expected a little bit more from your room, you know? You know, we went into that, that situation where we won the, the first game in Melbourne, unfortunately lost the second game, and pretty much everyone had written us off because we'd never ever won a game in Perth in the history of the competition. Never seen a more important foul shot for Andrew Gay. All credit to the man. All credit to the man. Too early to celebrate yet, but by gee, that makes the Wildcats task all that much harder. The Tigers bench ecstatic. Gaze with the pressure going up for making the first. The Tigers cannot afford to foul. They've just got to run away from the Wildcats. Don't touch a thing yells out Gaze. Vlahov for two. Uh, and the Tigers for the first time in history have won the NBL title. Well, super effort for the Melbourne Tigers. Great seeds of jubilation. Great presence of mind from Vlahov last time when he got that ball, Stephen. Didn't take the three-pointer, knew three points weren't enough. He wanted the foul, and Bradkey was smart enough to back off. There you can see the Gaze family and the Gaze family in Perth enjoying the first ever. Is that emotion from Lindsay? Look at the Gaze family, Lindsay and Andrew. Andrew just tears streaming down their face. Something they've wanted so badly for so long. Great experience, you know, and, and thinking back on it, you know, you, you still even now, I sort of get goosebumps just thinking about it because it was such a, an amazing experience for me as an individual, but also from a club standpoint and the, the end, the competition and all those things made it for a special occasion. Great emotion, great effort. They went so close last year against the Magic. It's all theirs here today to enjoy. Dewey, you've, uh, you've done it all in basketball, just about everything. How does this sort of fit into the, uh, to the Andrew Gay's history books? This is the best because it's um, been the hardest to work for. I mean, I've been with this club since I was five years old. Sure, we won junior championships and we won a southeastern championship, but this is the ultimate. And um, above and beyond every, anything else, I could give two hells, but it's from my dad, I think, is the most important thing about the whole thing. I wanted to give my dad a hug and I was that pumped up. I didn't even realise what I was doing until I saw it on the replay. I had him basically in a full Nelson and wouldn't let him go. But... Um, but that's just the way it was in that situation, you know? It's just one of those things you just react and you don't even know what you're doing at the time. So um, your emotions are running wild and just obviously very excited because of the win, but a great sense of relief too that, you, that you've made the most of an opportunity to be able to capitalise on it. Went over there, 
and uh, got a part of it. It was probably made a little bit more difficult for me. It was right at the end of the season. You know, they couldn't make the playoffs. Um, and I think because of that, it made for a pretty tough environment to be going into because, you know, the motivation and also you know, a lot of injuries, that was the reason why I was there, um, and all those types of things made it for a, a pretty tough environment. But, you know, I got a lot out of it. To have the opportunity to go over there, play a few games in the NBA and, and, and sort of have that experience. It was just a, a fantastic opportunity. Oh, hey. They, they thrive on emotion so much, like no other team in the league. Gordon for three. Yeah! Ray Gordon is having both a nine out. Oh! Oh! That could provide the Tigers with the touchdown. Can't they, Bailey? Gaze alley oop to Copeland. Timmons for two. What an awesome dunk that was. Copeland. Gaze on the break. Gaze. Will he give it to Timmons? Alley oop! Oh, Sensational play! comes from the dad's approach to the game. You know, the last thing that he always tries to tell us whenever we're going out for pretty much any game is tell us, go out there and have fun and enjoy yourself. That's right. You go down. Just go down and stay away from the ball. It's my trouble. But you guys, I don't want you standing around. As soon as you come back, overplaying us again. So the fellas up there on the outside, just go exchange and come back and go again. Look after that. Keep the ball out the last time. Keep the Keep the ball out the last time. He is the Melbourne Tigers now. If you said that around him, he'd go, no way. He owns the Melbourne Tigers. He lives with the Melbourne Tigers. His name is Andrew Melbourne Tigers Gaze. <laughs> That's him. We want it to be very yeah. good now. Yeah. And we just yeah. want so this man, go Fisher. Give it up for the Bring it on, Fish. Stand up here. In uh, 96, probably on the heels of me with my experiences back when I'd um, been in the NBA, um, Mark Bradkey when he tried out, and Luke Longley, and, and even Andrew Vlahoff, and some of these other guys, you know, they make the rookies put on a show entertain the vets in some way, shape or form. And I think that we all, all the older guys got together and say, hey, this is a pretty good concept. We like this concept. You know, a chance for these guys to, you know, to, to open up and, and show them in a light which obviously they're not real comfortable with. Ooh, at the corner. <laughs> I really couldn't have met a more overtly proud Australian than Scott Fisher. And when you combine that with his skill on the basketball court, his personality off the court, just made for a, a very, very integral member of our, our team. And I think that his performance on the, the rookie night um, was indicative of his involvement of the whole, in, in all facets of the game, that he was able to provide such magnificent entertainment. For the fellas, he was very good. First part of the season, you know, everyone the, there were cries to get rid of me, old man, sack him as coach. I mean, we were three and nine, really looking down the barrel at that stage, saying, "Gee, we might not even make the playoffs, let alone think about winning a championship." And then to sort of go through that circumstances and have that hardship, and having the ability to turn it around. And being a little bit older and, and understanding at that particular time of what it takes to, to be able to do that, it was a, just an enormous sense of achievement and um, great sort of feeling of accomplishment with, amongst ourselves because we knew what was required to get us there. A little bit stagnant, the Tigers. We're down to 10 seconds. Look for Gaze, he'll work. Kelly one on one. Gaze off balance, oh, makes it. Big man. basket. The first for the night for Andrew Gaze. And the Melbourne Tigers all of a sudden lead by seven, and they're up to 23. Here's a chance, Ray Gordon. 
Oh, Mr. it. Oh, Timmons! What a oh, rebound! Sensational! Bradkey. Oh! Giddy oh. on the ground, you beautifully! <laughs> Gaze! Oh. Copeland spots up. Look out. Triple! Well, Tony Robinson's been averaging seven points a game in this grand oh. final series. Gaze is gone. Gaze! Gaze all of a sudden's found the hot hand. He only needs two or three feet, and he's going to get the feel. He's going to catch and shoot. Kelly's got to be right there in his shorts. Now Drimmick, Magic leader score. Big oh, reach out by Warren Kitty. Don't bring that in here. Tigers Gaze. have got the numbers. Gaze alley oops it to Brad Key. This is a sinner, but Copeland tips it in. Oh, what a play by Warwick Giddy at the other end. Really came from nowhere to throw that one away. Magic leader score. Drimmick off to the oh, races. Great Does move. beautifully. Again, he can't finish it. Egan. At three, he hasn't been able to finish Drimmick. Gaze one, one to Copeland, steaming down the court at 100 miles an hour. And the Tigers lead by 14. Magic really need a score here to go into halftime with some confidence. McKinnon on the drive. What a dunk from Sam McKinnon. There's the screen. Giddy, bang. An elbow right in the jaw. The Magic have gone on a 6-0 run here to finish the third quarter. This is the last play of the third term. And it's a pretty big one for the Magic if they can get a stop here, Dean. Yep, they're right in this ball game. Timmons. They put some heat on the ball. They're going to get the pressure right on the player. Co oh. Copeland, oh, oh, God, that is fantastic. Huge. Renard Copeland. That was a big shot at three-quarter time. And Ray Gordon likes it. Turnover. Gaze. Andrew Gaze a dunk. Oh, he couldn't get up there. Could not get up there. He tried, but he'll take the two. Melbourne by 13. Turnover. Parkinson gets it back. Andrew Parkinson spots up for the three and makes it. Ten-point ball game. 93-83. Tigers running down the clock. And for the second time in their history, the Melbourne Tigers are champions of the NBL. They won the title in 1993 when they defeated the Perth Wildcats. And they've won it again for the second time. Look at Andrew Gaze with the Magic coach Brian Gorshin. It was a tough series for Magic tonight. A couple of their players were pummeled. McKinnon broke his nose. Kelly took a chunk out of his tongue. There's Ray Gordon. It was a great series, played in great spirit. Fantastic series, Stephen. There's the Gaze plan. And a beautiful picture. Saw some great scenes back in Perth in 93 when they won it for the first time. And the Melbourne Tigers, earlier in the year, were second last. And they have come, produced one of the great comebacks in Australian sporting history, you have to say. Oh, well, that to is come from cool. second last to win the championship. One more loss in that period of time and they would have been written off. I don't think they could have even made the playoffs. They came up, finished second. Mate, I asked you, to, I asked you to go tonight. It's an emotional time for you. I thought it's a tear before. Yeah, it's emotional, mate, because we're running the pump. Because if we had lost this, I tell you, the media, everyone would have left us alone. So we were really under the pump and we come through big time. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1997 Mitsubishi Challenge champion. Quick word, I usually say this after game. The emotions get twisted. It's only tomorrow or the day after that all this will really sink in and what you've done to get here. You see, the sort of thing that goes through my mind is say, who is there to thank millions and millions of people? But as far as you guys are concerned, you've all made us proud, but my, my pride extends beyond to you guys who are doing most of the work. And I'm thinking about the others. Because without you, we don't get anything. So thanks a lot for that. That's well right, done. Baby. Championship 
and um, actually had a one of the scouts, the European scouts, you know, I'm 33 at this stage, he came up to me and said, listen, there's a lockout on, you know, the coaches and that from the, um, the NBA can't talk to you, but, you know, we'd be, I think the, the Spurs, you know, I think you'd be a good fit with the San Antonio Spurs, would you be interested? You know, and I looked at him and I said, I said, thanks very much. I said, mate, do you know how old I am? <laughs> that was the first thing I said. I said, he said, yeah, 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 you're 30. I said, well, you know, is that still an option? You know, you still want me? He said, yeah, 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 no worries. I said, yeah, well, if they're keen, you know, I'm, I'd love that opportunity, that experience. It'd be fantastic. So I accepted and went over there. And, um, and sure enough, we just in the right place at the right time. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to at least share in, um, the experience of, of winning a championship. I remember the first day I went to training and we were there and um, we, we'd do some shooting and stuff but we also get involved in the weight. So half the team would shoot then we'd switch over and we'd go in the weight room. And I was there and um, trying to, this is the very first day, trying to look strong, trying to look like I'm part of it, looking like an athlete sort of thing. So I'm there and um, you know, I've got David Robinson and Tim Duncan, you know, guys that you've read about and heard about, Steve Kerr, just won a championship with the Bulls, all these sort of things. So I'm there with a weightlifting guy, and he's a huge guy, and um, we're doing some bench, and he goes, uh, you know, he puts some weights on there, and he, and he, and he puts it in, tells me the figure in pounds. I haven't got a clue, what's a pound? I don't, I don't know what that means. I said, mate, oh, I, I don't know, and he says, oh, he works there, he goes, oh, it's probably about... I don't know, 60 kilos. I sweet, got that covered, no drama. So I get under this thing and I lift this <laughs> bar up and it just gets, you know those little nibs? <laughs> Lifting it over, I just get it over there and the thing comes crashing down on my shoulder. It would have been 120, 130 kilo I reckon. And it's there and I'm trying to push it up and everyone's, I'm like, I haven't got it, I haven't got it. And the guy's there lifting it up and we get it back up there and all the boys are absolutely wetting themselves at me thinking, what the hell have we recruited here? This guy's a wimpy, can't even lift the weight. Uh, I was strangled around my neck trying to push it up. And uh, they gave me plenty about that one as well, but it wasn't really my fault. I just didn't know, I didn't know how much the thing weighed. Wow, wow, what? Boom! It's showtime, y'all. The burger in the house playing basketball. Everyone's hot for the black and silver. The mighty twin towers will deliver. You can't go wrong when Sean is on. Jumping over players like they was pawn. Now, who are you going to call? TP. Who are you going to call? Big T. Dave, Doug, a little general, too. Elliot, Elliot, and the bum rush crew. They're from the wow, wow, wow. We're getting yeah, down at the playing with guys that earning. Ten million dollars a year, US. Um, this type of thing, it's it's sort of a bit intimidating, you know. Like how, do, and then you, you know, you get invited around to David Robinson's house, and you see David Robinson, you go, oh my God, this is the biggest house I've ever seen, you know. It's, but you know, in time when you, you you're with those guys and 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 you're sort of learning from them as you go along, you get to meet them and know them and know their families and that, you, you know, they just just normal guys. The, the, the whole thing that amazed me most about the San Antonio victory was the community response. Right from the last few games of the regular season throughout the playoffs, I mean, you live here in Victoria and you, you see the AFL Grand Final and see how it affects the community. It really, you know, it pales into almost insignificance to what they do in San Antonio because San Antonio, there's no other major sporting franchise in, in the town. So everything's Spurs. The victory parade they did for all the players was on these barges as we go through the city and they say something like there was 300,000 people the whole length of every part of this, this canal or river or whatever it is, the banks from the buildings, every vantage point there was just people the whole way around. And then you see Andrew Gaze right there, kind of has a shaved head in back there. Australian. He yes. was a big star. He's like the Michael Jordan of Australia. Oh, very much so, you know, and he took a role on this team where he didn't even get on the playoff roster. But I want to tell you, this guy was everything in practice. He kept up his demeanor. He was so pleasant to be around. What a great guy. You know what he said his wish is? He wants to go to the White House now and meet President Clinton. <laughs> He's probably going to be able to do it, too.
too. In fact, that's one of the reasons he joined the NBA to get on a championship team. Oh, and he's going to get his dream come true. And you won't believe how he's treating Australia. He's treated like Michael Jordan, as you mentioned down there. He is everything. You know, he played at Seton Hall, so he's had some New York exposure up there. You, you hear the crowd leading them in the chant, Go Spurs, go. The next man, he's the Australian shooter. And he's in his first year with us, been a tremendous asset to our team. Let's hear it for Andrew Gaines. When uh, they announced that the games were going to be in Sydney, you know, I really reevaluated my goals and said, yep, this now becomes a priority. I want to be a part of this because having had the experience of competing in the Olympic Games and seeing what such a, a magnificent thing it is, disregarding actually competing, just the environment that's created um, around the village, in the, in the host city, those types of things, it truly is one of the most unique environments you'll ever have in the world. Having that experience, I said, yep, I want to be a part of that and I would love the opportunity to be competing at, at those games. So. Um, I reevaluated my goals and, and really made it a priority to, to be a part of that. Unfortunately, things went well. This is our little where we stay, where we bunk down. This little portal homes. Call home for the next couple of weeks. This is our room, room number seven. I think the best way to describe this is compact. Tech Television, thank you Wayne Peterson for uh, providing those for the fellas, greatly appreciated. Shower, lovely, and uh, oh geez I've just knocked over the heater, and uh, toilet, very very compact, really. that's how it looks, not much to it. But with the video there and to see your teammates and their personality coming through and, and that, you know, a lot of the times I'm sure that was a, I was a bit of a pain in the ass sort of wanting to capture it all, but I wanted to get it all in because I knew that it was going to be something that this is what I want to remember for the rest of my life and have something that I can always look back on and jog my memory and, and reinforce those good things. I've been on a diet. <laughs> Rick, you've lost a lot of weight. We're all decked out. We're decked out. I'm a little bit rowdy, but I'd like to say that I have minimum two grand worth of new gear and two new bags. I'd ask you to notice the uh, hat that used to look like, as you said, the flying nun. It's now been craft, fully manipulated into Indian Jones. <laughs> Mohammed's on a, on a uh, no paddle pop diet. No McDonald's for the entire duration of these Olympic Games. There will not be a burger or a fry put in the north and south of one S Hammer. Well done, mate. It's a hard, it's a, it's a big commitment That's you're making. That's I'm prepared to do and make for our country and the good of the Hoops team. <laughs> one of the fellow security bikes here. Security, is it? <laughs> no. no. You're driving, eh? Oh, there you go. Oh, that's what I did. Did the camera work? That's what we like to see. Yeah. See? Thanks. Another helper. <laughs> well done. See you, mate. This is the big food hall. Right in here. This is where we tuck in. McDonald's on tap. As much as you can eat. Chefs from all over the world. Paddle Pops. The Scourge. And he's James. James, James, your father's from Bhutan, isn't he? James's father, that's how we got to know him, me and James. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, remember that? Yeah. You remember that when we went yeah. to Bhutan together? Yeah. Lovely little country. Was that out the Never Never? Yeah, yeah. just back there. Yeah. Yeah. Good, anyway, how you fight? Yeah. Um, well, I've got to fight Brazil. Brazil? Yeah. Oh, You're lucky you haven't got to fight Bhutan, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> no one has yet to hit one from the centre line. Oh, great one. At the new venue. See if we can christen the new venue from the centre line. Oh. There it is. The venue has been christened. Oh, they're straight back at ya! 
Oh, that is unbelievable. Incredible honesty by Hammer. That is fantastic. See? You say that with oh, Just the... Well done, mate. Well done, how do you feel? I'm feeling a little bit fatigued. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit fatigued. I've been working all my life for that opportunity. But most importantly, it highlights the Olympic spirit of Shane being honest. Yes, well done. Thank you. You won't see that very often. Good day's work out, boys. First look at the new venue. I also want to thank God. <laughs> Shane had it, and um, he had a good hard crack at it too. But I think that um, we both wanted to remember that experience, those experiences. And um, his contribution is probably a little bit more colourful than mine, but that's just the nature of our uh, personalities. I mean, look at him. He's six foot, dyed hair, you know. I'm six foot seven, gangly looking with grey hair. You know, we, we, we're certainly different. So we both made our own little contribution to, uh, to the film. For such a passionate and, and a person that plays with so much effort yes. in the game, your shoot around skills are a disgrace. Why? Because you, you, you don't rebound anyone else's ball, and then the ball you are rebounding for your shooter, I mean, you make no effort, and then you throw sloppy passes I'll until you're shooting. The only thing you're interested in <laughs> is yourself. I think that's a bit harsh. No. Can you ask somebody else? Ask Luke. No, nah, let's, uh, let's ask <laughs> Luke. But, but before we ask Luke, can I just recapture <laughs> capture possibly the funniest thing I've seen in about a week, mate? <laughs> is when you're at the free throw line <laughs> and you turn around to play some defense and your feet got <laughs> tangled. No, that wasn't what happened, mate. Mate, that was hilarious. What are you talking about? It was the zone defense. Yeah. And I went to go under the screen and Hogs, you know how he grabs you from the hips? Yes, yes. He grabbed me from the hips and I wasn't ready, mate. And then he threw me and then bang, mate, I'm down. Can you can you back me up on this one? Andrew's technique of rebounding the ball in shoot around. Tell me, is it good or is it oh no. Is the technique a good technique or is it a bad technique? Because I believe personally that he doesn't make an effort. So, you know, he's a fantastic, what can more can we say about Drew? He's a fantastic guy, he's a, he's, he's a great ambassador for the sport, but he's horrible. <laughs> he's a, he's shocking. Mate, that is he's, he's shocking on the phone. Mate, I reckon well, I, I make the... Excuse me. Let me tell you. Now, 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 is, I believe is, I make the best effort for this, my teammate. Be, he's would, a dead set rebounding liability. Now, this, no way. But on Andrew and Polly, there has been not Who's too thanks? much attraction to the old Bic. <laughs> Did they win one? Did they win one? The flag carrier snuck through at the nine minute mark for his first victory, this particular tick. The second tick came at the six minute mark. Thank you. But the bottom line is, is there are winners and then there's Andrew and Paul. Notice Paulie didn't win one and that's because of Andrew's bad rebound. Correct. And then when you we changed the teams, we shot. came down the other end and I teamed up with you and I hardly got to shut up. Because Mate, we won. We won three out of five. No effort. We Andrew. won three out of five, Shane. Hey, I've got to go now. I can't, I can't wait any longer because... Shane. <laughs> we both uh, like to do similar sorts of things. And um, we're both very loud. So that's all we ever hear is, because when we go at it, we start talking trash. None of us w wants to back down. So it's who can do it, outdo the other the most. So every day of the time we hear from our other room, other, other teammates, you guys shut up, you know, they're going at it. Well, I think we're like big kids in there just going at it. But it's, um, we get along well, and I think we, we've worked off each other very well. Stand there, and I'll just you just follow the flight. Right here, mate. Here we go. No, no, Drewy, I apologise. <laughs> Scrub that. You surely you've got to you do a little bit of work or something. You know? I know. Can you just Last night. get behind a wheel and drive a bus or something? Yeah, well, maybe, maybe we'll give the basketball a miss, eh? Let's see what's going on. I remember, and there's a number of things that I remember about this occasion um, for the rest of my life. I remember the day we, we arrived in the village and every team that comes in then goes to a press conference. So myself and Mark Bradke had to go and represent basketball at a press conference in the village. So the press come along and this would be 
this is the day before it was going to be announced who the flag bearer was. And John Coates, he he hosts the uh, the press conference type of thing, and he's also the one that's he's the sole person that selects who's going to um, carry the flag. And so we did the press conference, and then after the press conference, I had to do a few one on ones, and then myself and Mark were walking out of the the area where we have the press conference, and we walked about twenty meters. And John Coach was there standing talking to some, so we sort of said, oh, see you later, John. And then just as we walked by, he goes, oh, Andrew, um, can you come over here? I want, I want to talk to you for a second. So Mark and I go over there, and um, he, he said, oh, yeah, you know, that was great. You know, thanks very much for your help in the press conference. And, um, oh, and Andrew, by the way, uh, I would like you to carry the flag um, in the opening ceremony. And he sort of said that, and then he said, the way he said, he said, oh, I would like you to carry the flag. And I thought there was going to come, but we're going to give it, you know, I've decided to do, I thought he was doing that. And then there was no but. And I was like, so I, so you, um, you want me to carry the flag sort of thing? He's like, yep, yep, you know, you, so you appreciate you, what you've done with the Olympics and, you know, your fifth Olympics, this, that and the other. And at that stage, I, was, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And it was just such a overwhelming experience. We were there and... As soon as he left, I was there and I, I just started to cry. I couldn't believe it. I, I, I was that emotional about it all because it just shocked me a little bit. And I was there and Mark was there and he was pretty emotional about it too because he was so excited. So, so you know, and, I, and he asked me, you know, we couldn't, you know, to keep it pretty quiet, not allowed to tell anyone. So, because it was going to be announced the next day. I told the fellas and you sort of don't know what sort of response that is going to get. So I was there and I said, oh, fellas, you know, I want to tell you something, you know, because Barry just told us to get ready tomorrow night, could be a special, could be a special night because we'd, we've got to go to this announcement. Everyone knew I was a candidate. And um, I said, oh, well, fellas, you know, i just done that. And I could, I could hardly get it out to say, fellas, I know I've already got the job. So I'm, I'm halfway there and I said, fellas, you know, I've already been told and I'm going to, and I, I broke down and just as I did that, Everyone, all the fellas come storming on me and they would jump me and we're hugging and we're bouncing around. It was, and for me, I guess it was the most rewarding thing is to see the response of others that really meant so much to me as well. To say, hey, this is, you know, for my teammates who really you share it with in a team sport, to see their response was just, you know, the most amazing thing. I'm sharing my accommodation couple of feet from the flag bearer. Well, how we don't really know that yet, do we? Yeah. Only <laughs> us. It's a little bit emotional. <laughs> I, I have been building up it. <laughs> I shed it to you last night. I'll be honest with you. I mean, how many other people, mate, are rooming with the flag nah, bearer? fair enough, mate. Fair and, enough. Uh, you know, it's a little bit like, you know, I'm proud. It's great to be part of it. And it's great that you get to pick who walks next to you. I've learned that a lot. <laughs> Appreciate the sentiment, mate. No, well done. What have we got here, Joey? Well, we've got a uh, lovely function we're about to... Uh, what, what's going on here? Oh, they're about to announce uh, the flag bearer and other ceremonial activities that are going to take place in the open ceremony. So, you know, it's a very exciting time for us all, every member. And, uh, oh, just have a look at the crowd. Who's who? Australian Athletics. Given what could happen, would you care for a beer? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Something to I was calm. just like, that Foster? Something, something to calm the nerves a little bit. No, no, it's all happening. Is there something in the Foster section that would make you feel a little bit more relaxed? <laughs> uh, I want you one day you would carry the flag on behalf of all your brothers, mate. Australia's flag bearer for the 2000 Games and the team captain is Andrew Gale.
calm yourself. Compose yourself. Let him rip, Joey. Let him rip, Joey. Let him rip, Joey. Knock it out, John. We are. We are. We are. I thought he went down, mate. Yeah, well, at the time, I was very emotional about it all. And I went up there and I shook John's hand. I was starting to feel the eyes well up. So I, I gave him a bit of a hug just to sort of say, buy some time to try and compose myself. And um, Mrs. Howe was there. And, and just to, to see all those sort of gave me a little bit of time to sort of regroup and gather my thoughts and get back on track. <laughs> <laughs> to kiss them all, mate. <laughs> Slap one on him, Joey! Hey, Joey! Here we go, we've got the flag bearer. He's just got ready. Big day in the history of flag bearing. This is what I have to wear, mate. This is what I have to wear because I am the FB, my man. Flag bearer. So I walk around like that, and when it's Australia's turn, someone comes and gives me a tap. Young fella, up the wrecks, hunt you go. Maybe they could put a name tag on you as well. If they, if maybe if you can't remember that you're the flag bearer, maybe you might not be able to remember your name as well. What are you going to be thinking, mate? What are you thinking now? What's the feelings? It's very emotional, Emma. It's an emotional time, but uh, just looking forward to it. And seeing the kiddies, I'm sure I'll be able to spot them out there. There's only 110,000 punters, so I'll go back. There you are, Melinda. There you going, court stuff, thief stuff, and at home. God love you. Away we go. I look good though, don't I? When we, before you go out into the venue, all the teams uh, assemble in the Olympic, uh, in the Superdome. And you, you, you wait for your turn to be called out and then you go out onto the arena. So we're there and when we came up, there's 600 of us or whatever, I was right at the back. So I was like, See you later, fellas. You know, it's time for me to, to get going. I've got to, I'm up the front. So I did that and said goodbye to the fellas and I start walking off. Well, just so I've done that, they were like, yeah, cheering me. So sort of everyone could see me walking, getting ready to walk out the front. So as I did that, I was walking up. It was like it was the parting of the Red Sea. And the Australian team sort of made this little wave through me. And they all started cheering like, yeah, because here we were finally getting to go. So they all started clapping and cheering and, and I was high-fiving as I went to the front. And for me, as an athlete, and seeing other great athletes which you admire and, and seeing how excited they were. And I think, you know, a lot of them weren't necessarily getting excited because it's me or, or, or for me, but I think they were more excited for what I was representing. I was representing being the flag bearer. So to go up there and see all the emotion in that was just a, a fantastic experience when you've got the absolute cream of the crop of Australian sport. Getting excited about you getting ready to go up was just a, an amazing thing. And then you walk out and you're walking around and seeing people that aren't in the venue as you walk by and seeing them getting so psyched, you just build you up and you start to get excited. And then you go into the tunnel before you go down and the noise from the other performers and that and then they see you there and they just going absolutely nuts. It just, you build up into this frenzy and then it's capped off by walking out and there's 110,000 going berserk. It's just, you know, like I said, you can't explain it. Just fantastic. Consider that we're playing, I, I believe, the most participated sport in the world. More people play basketball than any other sport. More countries play basketball than any other sport. There's, I think, four or five more countries registered with FIBA, the governing body, than there are soccer countries registered with FIFA. So when you talk about the most participated sport in the world, played by more countries in the world, and here we are, Australia, with our minuscule population of 19 million people, and we get to a situation where we finished fourth in two consecutive Olympics, I say that that's something that is deserves credit and we should be proud of. Um, I hope to, to, to continue to play as long as I can. I, I still really love playing basketball and I think my role has to evolve now. You know, I'm 35, the days of, of sort of being the leading scorer in the NBL, those sorts of things I think are, are coming to an end. 
Um, but I still think I can contribute in just as significant ways and, and, and change my role and hopefully for a few more years yet I can I can play at the highest level in, in Australia, that's the NBL and that's what I want to do. And I want to be involved in the sport for the rest of my life, you know, in some capacity, whether it's administratively, coaching or uh, media, whatever, you know, this is what I do and, and hopefully um, those opportunities will be there for me.